before all of this, you know, you mentioned your Hollywood years, and the first book came out in 96, and you said very publicly that you went back to the literary world to write bigger than you were allowed to write right. in film and television. So how surprised were you that you were even approached for an adaptation of something you had written specifically not <laughs> for film and television? Well, uh, you know, I, I began to be approached around the time Clash of Kings came out and, and even more when Storm of Swords came out. Those were the first two books to actually hit the bestseller lists. Um, Game of Thrones did okay, but it didn't hit any list, uh, but the series built. Imagine? So um, Clash of Kings, you know, hit the New York Times list at like number 13 for one week, and Storm of Swords was a little higher on the list and lasted a few more weeks. And at that point, I started getting these inquiries from uh, from Hollywood, and I thought at the time, well, these these guys don't know what they're they're talking about here. They they don't know that it's impossible to do. Um, <laughs> and some of them indeed didn't. They were just looking at the list. You know, the Lord of the Rings movies were making an obscene amount of money and were gigantic hits. So Hollywood is basically imitative. So. Uh, at the time that the Lord of the Rings movies were setting these box office records, a lot of the studios and producers were looking around saying, well, what other fantasies are out there that we can buy? And they all started buying fantasies. And, you know, we've seen a few of them. I mean, Narnia subsequently made it to the screen. Um, Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials, the first book, made mm -hmm. it to the screen. And they came looking for mine. But uh, I took a few meetings. I'm always willing to take a meeting. I got some free lunches out of it. <laughs> uh, and they would present their ideas to me of how they would adapt these into, into movies. Uh, um, but to adapt them into movies, to get, you know, and they weren't even talking about one book. They were talking about the entire series. They wanted to know how it ended so they could figure out how to wrap it up. And they would say things like, well, it's, it's really the story of uh, Daenerys. So we'll, we'll eliminate these other characters. We'll just fo focus on Daenerys or on Jon Snow or on Ned in some cases. And, and, uh, like, do you know what happens to Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have to change that part. <laughs> um, so I listened and I ate the free lunches, but I didn't, <laughs> I didn't buy for any of those. But it did get me thinking that the only way to do this was, was not for, for the feature films. Much as I would have liked to have a $200 million budget, uh, I thought it was better to tell the entire story with all of the characters and all the complexity. And the only way to do that is television. Uh, and not any television either, because eh? you can't, there's too much graphic sex and graphic violence and too much complexity for network television. Mm -hmm. uh, the networks would, would be too leery of it. They would water it down too much. So it had to be premium cable. And, and HBO, of course, is the Tiffany's of that, doing, doing more shows and better shows. And of course, I'd, I've been a huge HBO fan for ages. I've, I've had HBO for, uh, God, I don't even want to think how long. but. Uh, <laughs> Shows like Deadwood and Rome in particular showed me that they were the people who could really, really do this. And Scope. when I met David Benioff and, and uh, Dan Weiss, and they had the same idea, and it would, that was a match made in heaven. 